What is up you guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I have an interview with Alexa Keck of Keck's Customs Furniture up in Indiana. And she is my very first client ever. And this is a really cool story of her first month inside of the Woodworking Business Accelerator program. So I'd love for you to check it out and uh, enjoy. Welcome to the show, Alexa. I'm so grateful to have you on the podcast. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So um, I've been talking about you a little bit for the last couple of weeks on the podcast and uh, some of your initial results that you've gotten uh, with working with me through the Woodworking Accelerator program. But I wanted to just bring you on, kind of share your story with everyone of kind of how you got started in woodworking, um, how you've developed your brand over time and uh, kind of really capturing the transition from where you were into where we're headed now that, okay. that we're, we're partnered up together working, working um, inside the accelerator program. So talk to me about when you started your business, how long ago was this, what year, uh, what was your goal and um, what were you, what were you, what drove that? Okay. Well, I started, I think it was September of 2019 is when I officially started doing woodworking. And I started with blanket ladders, completely self-taught, had no idea what I was doing. Um, I worked out of my um, old home that me and my husband were in. It was a concrete room in our bi-level home. It was 10 by 12, no windows or anything. So started with that and then just got requested for coffee tables and dining tables and worked out of there as long as I could. And then I was at a um, factory job. It's Chrysler here in where I'm from in Indiana. And I was a full time on there and just didn't like it, fell in love with woodworking. And then I'm a risk taker, so convinced my husband to let me do this full time. And now I'm at my um, in-laws property in a 1600 square foot shop and just hired my first employee about three months ago and officially went official as an LLC um, October of last year. Awesome. So, yeah. Cool. I, before this, I was, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I really had a goal, but I have been consistent ever since I started, which is a blessing from God. But um, I just started um, dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger and seeing what this could be and kind of following in your footsteps from afar for a really long time. But um, yeah, now we're doing big things since I've joined you. Cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. So, so you have, do you still do a lot of blanket ladders or smaller projects or do you, what have you kind of focused on the most? No, I'm just really strictly dining tables now. Um, it was small projects there for about a year. And then I saw the potential that the bigger projects could get me. And I wasn't hardly making any money off of the smaller things. Um, I did my first really big project there about a year and a half ago. I did mudroom lockers and that kind of really took me off, but I fell in love with making dining tables. And so that's what I kind of focused on. Um, so that's what I mainly do now. Cool. And, cool. Yeah. So what would be your advice to someone tinkering with small projects or big projects? Which way should, should you go? What do you, big projects for sure okay, all so the way it's not I mean small projects can be fun but they're time consuming you're going to spend more money doing them versus what you're going to make from them and you know it's just better off making you know you can get a dining table done now in like three days and right. make a heck of a profit off of it too yeah cool yeah so talk to me about um, like on average before we started working together, like what was, what was your average month? What did that look like from a sales standpoint? What did it look like from a, how much you got done standpoint? Like, like how many, uh, how many sets could you get done in a week? Um, and, and just kind of give me the lowdown on what your business kind of looked like 
on average every month before you okay. started working with me? Okay. So my biggest month I think was Black Friday of last year. I um, created a website, spent a lot of time trying to do that by myself and was like, I'm going to do this. And I think I made $7,000 in that day. And that was a huge, that was like huge for me. Um, but my lead time has always been where like I could bring money in, but getting things out, especially by myself, has been the hardest thing. So I would get a dining table set maybe a week and a half to two weeks. So two to three a month, if that. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So, so before we do the big unveil <laughs> of, of kind of your results from your first month of working with me, yeah. um, what were some, you know, in the first week we made some pretty awesome changes to what you do and without giving all of our secrets away, okay. like what were the results of those changes from a production standpoint? Oh my gosh, huge. Like things that I didn't even think about I mean, we went from doing a dining table every week and a half to two weeks to getting a dining table set out in three days. And from gluing a tabletop that used to take me two days, now it takes me an hour and a half. So, I mean, it's, it was just life-changing, honestly. And now, this last week, we got three dining tables done in a week, wow. which awesome. is crazy. So it's great. just been, it's been great. That's awesome. So for those of you that are listening, the thing that I want you to realize is that um, this, it just expands what's possible. So like before, had I come in and started working with Alexa and we're just selling like wildfire, well, with her old production times, her lead times are just getting astronomical. You know, they get up 16, 18, 20 weeks. Uh, but now by cutting more than half of uh of her production down and we can start increasing sales and and keep relatively low lead times um as well so mm -hmm. so okay so your your best day ever was was black friday last year you did seven thousand dollars in a day mm -hmm. um and and so on average though like what did an average month look like oh I don't think I've ever, I ever crossed the $10,000 mark Okay. Um, okay. So, with orders and getting things out. Gotcha. Okay. So fi let's say five to eight or five to $9,000, something like that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So last month, so it's April, today's April 12th. So we yeah. started working together. It wasn't the very first day in March. It was like the seventh or eighth of March, right? Yeah, I think something so. Like yeah. Okay. Well, the good news was that Alexa did already have a website that looked great. Um, and she had already been running some Facebook ads and had been doing a couple of the things that, that I would immediately come in and do with the program. Um, so that was good. That got us jump started. But here's the big unveil. Tell them <laughs> what your final, so on average was doing five to eight, five to $9,000 a month. Yep. And then from March 8th or 9th to the last day of March, what did you do in total sales? $42,000. I think it's 428 or something like that. I can't remember yeah. the exact number, but yeah, 42,000. Yeah. So she I did want everybody to hear that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> $42,000 in sales. And so that is actually Let's see here. Let's say her average month, let's say it was $7,500 divided by 42.7. Oh, no, I did that wrong. 42.7 divided by 7,500. That is 5.7 times larger than her biggest month ever, her very first month. Now, if we can be honest, yes. this caused a lot of chaos and stress as well. Yes. If we're being honest. Oh, but yeah. the good news is, is that we don't have to solve every problem right now. And yeah. the thing that I, I talk a lot about on, on the podcast is that as you grow, you are going to go through stress. Like it's just like being in the gym and you 
like if you just go in and lift the same kind of weight every single day and you don't ever put your body under an increased amount of stress, your body doesn't ever adapt or grow. But um, it's the same way with our businesses that we have to push ourselves to the next level of uncomfort to where we're solving those problems. And so, so now Alexa has a ton of orders sitting there ready. We're ready to get to them. But the good news is, is, is instead of you, like if Alexa had just hired a marketing guru, that was just a marketing guru, he, he could have come in and gotten her great results from a sales standpoint, but she would have still been taking a week and a half to two weeks to get a table set done. But because I, I'm, uh, I've spent a lot of time in this woodworking industry, we're able to cut that way down as well. So now, even though she has a ton of orders, her lead times are very similar to where they were before she started with me, even in the same boat. And the beautiful part about all this too, is now she has a little bit of cash to work with. Yeah. So she can get, she can get some of the tools that she needs. She can get some of the equipment that she needs. She can start looking at hiring and outsourcing and doing uh, the things that she needs to do to really be become more of the business owner instead of just the woodworker uh, that maybe she had been before. And so, so what's your long-term goal here? What are you, what are you hoping to accomplish? What are you, uh, what are you dreaming of? I'm, Ooh, man, this has just opened my mind to so many different avenues, but I can see me stepping away from woodworking a little bit. I would like to still be in the shop maybe eight hours a week, but um, I would love to have a half a million dollar a year business. Um, I want to expand my shop. Um, that's something that we're looking to do pretty quickly because we're going to run out of space. Um, I want to have, you know, just kind of model what you're doing and have at least four full-time employees in the shop. And we're working on getting a delivery driver right now, um, have somebody to handle the sales um, and just kind of become that businesswoman that I am feel like I'm being called to become. So yeah, big dreams, but you know, I'm excited for it. Cool. Yeah. Well, awesome. So I could ask you a ton more questions. Um, I guess, let me ask you this question. So tell me about, you know, when I first announced that I was going to open up this program and do it, kind of what pushed you over the ledge? Like what, what helped you get over maybe the fear that you might've had of taking the leap and working with somebody that's a coach or a consultant, like just yeah. walk me through what was going on in your heart and your mind. I'm sure you were a little bit nervous. You're a little bit scared. You're a little bit like unknown, like you were afraid of the unknown, right? So just yeah. walk me through like what that looked like. Well, so I was getting to the point, like I, once we hit this year, like I knew that I wanted to make a change and my husband works full time and he is not interested in coming and helping me, which is completely fine. Um, he does help with, you know, delivery and stuff, but he's passionate about what he does. Yeah. And so in order to do that, I'm, I can't do this by myself. And I told myself for the first two years that I can do it all and nobody can do it as good as I can. And it's just a lie that we tell ourselves. And so I finally took the plunge and hired somebody. And, but that was a bunch of fear because you're providing for somebody else. Yeah. So, and I was not, you know, bringing in the cash as well as it is now. So once I heard you announce this, like it was just on my heart, like this is it, this is what's going to take me where I need to be. And I, don't have the knowledge that I need to fix my shop systems and learn how to market and manage my money and all the things that come with being a business owner. And it just clicked. And, you know, I knew that it was going to be kind of a financial, what, leap of faith, because after I paid you, I had $200 in the bank and that was it. And I'm still paying my employee. I'm still paying my bills. And, but something in me just said, you know what, this is how it's got to be. And yeah. yeah. Cool. So one thing that I just want to remind everyone of too is, um, is that usually in general, I've found that 
um, your life doesn't get better until you get better. So like very rarely do your circumstances just totally change. Very rarely does do, um, does your life get way easier or way better or you get way more financially free until you start changing. And so um, for people out there that are, that have been listening to the podcast, that have been tuning in, that have been thinking about joining this program, um, but haven't done it, like, what would you tell them? Like, what, what, other than like, you should do it. Yeah. Like, why? What, what, what do you feel like is, is the main driver? What, what has changed for you just in the last month? Um, a lot. I would really say that you are the one that's going to hold yourself back. Like nobody else is going to be able to do this for you. You have to make the choice. It is scary. It's very scary to step outside your comfort zone because it's not only going to um, scare you in a financial way, but it's also going to stretch you in uh, your mental capacity. And I mean, all across the board, but I can say that Zach knows what he's talking about. He is calm when I'm stressed out. I'm not the best at communicating. I'm, I'm working on it. But when I have communicated and been like, okay, I'm scared, he's very good at reassuring me like, um, you've never done this before. This is the first time. And sometimes we feel like we have to be, you know, at that next phase in your business, like right now, like it's going to happen overnight and it's just not going to. So he's great at reminding you that we have to take it one step at a time. And, um, yeah, you're just really good at what you do. You can, you can tell that this is what you're supposed to be doing. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. So, so well, guys, we're going to wrap up this, this episode uh, we try to keep them shorter, um, but I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse into kind of how our first month unfolded with Alexa, and um, we're really excited. You know, she is, the, I think the thing that that is really the coolest uh, thing that happens in our mind is just unlocking, like, or seeing that those bigger numbers are possible, like, because we, we get very accustomed to, okay, my business does between five and $10,000 a month. And that's what we get accustomed to. And we, we can't, it's hard for us to even imagine what it would look like with us doing 25 or 35 or 45,000 a month. Um, but um, it just takes in, in, an experience with it and an encounter with it to see this is actually a possibility. You know, and there's a podcast episode that I did back in uh, the very beginning of December where I talked about us breaking a hundred thousand dollars in sales over Black Friday weekend, and I'd never experienced that before. You know, I'd never uh, that was a brand new thing for me that just blew my mind. And um, I just want to just shout out Alexa for number one, uh, being super courageous. Uh, after she paid me the initial, and I'll just tell you, it's a $2,000 fee to get started. Um, after she paid me that initial $2,000, she only had $200 in her bank account. So like she had some guts y'all like, <laughs> and so I got to commend her for sticking her neck out and taking a risk and believing in herself enough that whatever I asked of her or whatever I told her to do, she was committed to it. She was going to do it and she was going to make the thing work. And so that's really what it does take on your part. If you uh, decide like, Hey, yeah, I want to fill out the application. I want to, I want to work with Zach. It's really like this, this undying commitment to like, I'm here to blow up your business and I need your help to do it too. And so it's just the commitment that no matter what, what comes our way, we're going to figure it out. And that's one thing that I try to be here for my clients for as well is that um, you're really not going to face any problems that I haven't already faced. And there may be problems like right now, for example, Alexa knows that she needs to expand her shop. She needs to get, get a new shop. Well, that's not some, something that we can just snap our fingers and tomorrow she's in a big, bigger, nicer shop. Everything's going smoothly. So we're working now to figure out how do we maximize the shop space we have? How do we maximize uh, the, the, the systems that we have? How do we get more tools? How do we uh, 
uh, order differently? How do we do all those things to really optimize and maximize what she has access to now until the right door opens, whether it be a month down the road or be six months down the road. And, and then one other great thing is like Alexa did $42,000 in sales this first month. Well, she honestly shouldn't do $42,000 in sales again the second month. Like she's still not big enough to be able to support that. So we scaled back advertising from what we would normally have to spend to hit that $42,000 goal to something that's manageable. That's something like, okay, what is, what's a good, because I'll just be completely honest too. $42,000 really exceeded my expectation or my goal as well. Um, I really thought that we would come in around 20 to 25. Um, it was like the 20th of the month or the 21st of the month. And it was like, she hit, she'd hit 20,000. I was like, if it goes crazy, you'll hit 30. You no, know? <laughs> yeah, it, it'll just be silly if you hit 30. Well, then she ended up at 42. So we got really crazy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I'm not just going to just throw all this on you. Like I'm not going to, uh, just, you know, drop, hit her with a $42,000 a month and just do it month after month after month without working with her and make adjustments to, to make sure that we're hiring the right people. We're getting her, getting her some bandwidth back as we do it. So, um, now, uh, is this, now do we have challenges at this, at this rate? Yes, we do. Do now we have a whole new set of challenges? Uh, but that's why I'm here is to help. And so, so Alexa, thank you for being on the podcast. Um, thank you. and thank you for having faith in me and taking a step of faith and uh, believing in yourself and ultimately making it happen. So, um, with that being said, we're going to wrap up this episode. If you would like to apply for the woodworking business accelerator program, I've got a link in the description beneath this podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I have it there as well. I really want to be a one-stop shop for you guys so that um, you come and you work with me and we grow your business together. Um, but with that being said, Alexa, thank you so much. Thank you. And we will see you in the next one.